Okay, so Logan spoiler talk. I think it's about time we start. So like I said, this is a spoiler talk, spoiler filled video and I'm not going to do that much, that much editing. I'm just going to be like talking about the film and what I think all the spoilery bits that I didn't cover in my non-spoiler review. I gave this film an A if you want to know. Um, I loved it a lot and I guess I'm just going to be going through all the spoiler bits in chronological order. So let's start with what I said in my review which was that this film cleared up a problem that I have ha been having with films and games and pretty much every form of thing you can okay basically you know how when you play like GTA for example or when you watch a film that a car they kind of the car goes through a fence and the car drives through a fence they're like hold on hold on and then the car goes through the fence and it just kind of like the fence just kind of breaks down it just kind of like crumbles this film is like realistic in that when Logan, uh, uh, Xavier, and uh, X-23, they were driving away from the bad guys, the, the soldiers, the Reavers, I believe they're called. And then they're like, uh, Logan's like, okay, hold on, we're going for the, we're going to try and go through the fence. They don't go through it, the fence. They don't make it. The fence is stronger. And that's more realistic. And that, that was just so incredibly satisfying. And the fact that they used, like, the barbed wire on the fence as a weapon was just so creative. And I love that. And uh, the reason that I didn't talk that much about X-23 in my my um, my non-spoiler review was simply because um, her character I I didn't want to I I wanted you guys to go into that film completely blank completely blind not know anything about it and I think that's probably the best way to uh, sort of watch this film and you know not knowing anything about it so I didn't talk much about her character bec and she was great I loved how she had two claws and like she had foot claws which was re really cool I didn't expect that and then I loved how they actually explained how and why she had foot claws I really liked that um, I just thought her character as a whole was really cool she didn't speak that much then you found out that she could speak and then she was like half Mexican it was just really cool her character in general now let's get to the violence with you know especially the casino scene oh my god the casino scene was insane, it was absolutely brutal. And then, you know, like when they had, like Xavier having a seizure, and Logan's just like getting through the, the, the walls because he, he's like the only one who can move. And then he gets closer to the door, and outside the door is that guy, that soldier standing with the gun. And then his eyes kind of like slowly turn to Logan, and he's like, oh shit. And then Logan's like, bam. And then like Logan's like, bam, bam, bam. And then Logan puts his um claws through this thing, and then it comes out like, Tick. and I was like, oh my. That, that was like, Okay, that's like the most satisfying scene, one of the most satisfying scenes I've ever seen in my life. Um, not just from a superhero movie, but just in general, because that actually captures the character of Wolverine so well. That is what Wolverine is like in the comics, and I just love that so much. And also, that one scene when um, he's running through the forest, it's like a one continuous tracking shot, and he's literally running through these guys. He's just cutting them to bits. That was so good as well. And it's like team up with like X-23. That was good as well. But now let's talk about what is, in my opinion, the most ballsy and daring scene in the whole film. The farm scene. First of all, Logan Xavier and X-23, they should never have gone to, uh, to, to stay with those guys. That was the biggest dick move you could have pulled because they knew that they were being hunted. They knew that if the, the bad guys found them, the, that family would have died. And they did because... When Xavier's t um, confessing to Logan, I mean, well, at least we think it's Logan, right? When he's saying, okay, what I did was unspeakable and all the horrible stuff that he did with the X-Men, which, again, I think was really intriguing. And I liked how they didn't tell us the whole backstory. I liked how they gave, gave us clues so that we can interpret it ourselves. But my interpretation was that Xavier had a, had a seizure and then he killed some of the X-Men, which is why none of them are left. And then... He, and then I was like, okay, this is a really nice sort of closure to the character. I really like how they're sort of completing his arc. And then the, the hand just kind of comes like, and I was like, oh! And then um, I looked up and it was like, hey, wait, 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 what? Hugh Jackman's got buzz cut. And then the X-23 Laura jumps and starts killing him. And then the kid, they killed the kid. You don't kill the kid in a movie, not even in a big blockbuster movie. You Like, they killed John Wick's dog, which I thought was like bad enough. And then they kill the kid. Like, the kid hits him with like a pipe. Which for some reason, I don't think any kid his age should be having a pipe. I certainly don't have a pipe in my room. Like a big metal pipe. I don't know why he has that, but he does. So, yeah. He gets stabbed in the face. And then 
and the mum comes with a shotgun. Again, I don't think any mum should have a shotgun, but she does. So yeah, she shoots uh, uh, the clone X-24, doesn't work, the mum dies, and the dad comes, the dad dies, and then Wolverine gets into this fight, and you know that he's not going to win, because he, like, the guy, uh, Logan is, like, beaten up, and he's broken down, and, like, the other one is, like, in his, Wolverine in his prime, and then they're just going at it, and then, like, Logan is just, like, um, uh, uh, stabbing him and uh, slashing him and then he's just healing instantly healing instantly and then he's slashing Logan and Logan's like oh okay I'm not healing and which brings me to um, my one of my biggest problems with this film Actually, I'm gonna address those now okay first off when they're in the limousine and they're looking at the clip that the, like, the nanny the, the nurse made I mean like I guess it's like some future tech like they have like iMovie instant or something because you I, to my knowledge, you can't do you can't do like clips together. And I'm a YouTuber. I I edit the clips like on a weekly basis. You can't do that on a phone that simply and just put it on your camera roll. To my knowledge, again, which was a bit much. It was like, but then again, it's the future. Like I said, they probably have like iMovie Instant or something. And also, when Boyd Holbrook's character, you know Murphy from Narcos, this guy, oh, I love him. He's great in Narcos. You watch Narcos, actually, it's a great show. Um, he gets blown up, like, there's a grenade, like, two feet from him, like, this, this is the grenade, this is the character, he, the grenade blows up, but he doesn't die, and again, to my knowledge, he doesn't have any healing powers, and so how he survived, I don't know, um, what else is there, so when Xavier dies, that when Xavier dies, and Logan is carrying him, and Logan puts him down onto the, onto the back of the truck, and Logan says, it wasn't me, that was, in my opinion, one of the most heartbreaking lines in the film because Logan is someone who has, since the beginning, saw Xavier as a father figure. And the fact that Logan couldn't live with himself if he knew that Xavier died thinking that Logan killed him was so heartbreaking. And that was so good. That was like the perfect line that he could have said. Which brings me to the final fight in the woods. Now, this was good and bad to a certain extent. Now let me explain. So when the kids are all running to the border, and they these kids all have mutant genes. They all have the kids. You know, like Laura is like Logan's daughter, and then so you know they get genes from mut mutants from the past. Surely they must have genes from Quicksilver or Nightcrawler or someone, and they could have just super speeded or teleported them all away as opposed to running. And then that was a bit of a like a bit of a plot hole. I I, I didn't. That was a bit weird for me and um the the final fight when logan is fighting with x24 when he's fighting with let's call x24 wolverine from that one when he's fighting the wolverine um that dickhead earthbender kid was just standing there doing nothing he, like, he i mean at the end he flips the truck on x24 um wolverine why wasn't he do it? Do something! He, he's so useless and he's like the leader of these young mutants. So, I, in fact, I didn't find any of the young mutants, with the exception of Laura, likeable or... I, I, I just didn't like them at all. But that was... that's just another problem. But... Okay, so, this, we're gonna talk about the ending now. And I was happy with the ending. I understood completely why they chose to kill off Wolverine. That's fine. I am happy with that. It, it's nice closure. It's a nice send off to the character, especially when she flips like the the cross onto the X. I was like, that's perfect. But how I personally would have liked to end the film, I'm going to talk to you guys how I would have ended the film. Now, I'm going to take you back to the very first X Men. Logan has always been someone without a purpose. He's always been a soldier without a purpose. He's been this killer, but he never has a purpose, and he wants to die an honourable death. In fact, the whole plot of the Wolverine was that Logan wanted to become mortal, he wanted to die, because he had nothing left to live for. And people would be like, okay, he finally got what he wanted, he, he died in this film. But when he meets Laura, when he meets his daughter, that gives him something to live for, that gives him a purpose. And when at the end, like I said, this movie gives you space to interpret things for yourselves. When he says, so this is what it feels like at the end, some people could have been like, okay, that's what he, he's saying, that's what death feels like. But what I thought was that he's saying that's what love feels like, that's what loss feels like. He's saying that when he's seeing his daughter because he's going to die. And so I feel like if he had survived, because, you know, his daughter is the one thing now that gives him purpose and gives him a reason to live. If he survived, that would have been better. Maybe they found a way, one of them can, like, one of the mutants can cure him or something. They, they can find a way, it's a movie. 
and how I would have liked the film to end was just the two of them riding off into the sunset and like a western because this film is ultimately a western so I would have liked to see them riding off into the sunset that would have been my perfect ending for this movie and now I'm going to end this video because I've been talking for way too long I hope you guys enjoyed this video I hope you have a good day take care thank you